Spinard Bread. And now, heard around the world on KBYR.com. Glory, glory, hallelujah. This is the Eddie Burke Show. Well, the truth is that every man struggles with middle age in his own unique way. Talk radio for the rest of us. There you go, Z Man. 221. 38 degrees. You're hooking me up, aren't you? Yeah, you're not smiling, though, Z-Man. What, are you sad because you're back home? Pretty good, Eddie. Are you okay? No, not really. Not really? No. I you just got back from Disneyland. Yeah, it's going to take me a couple days to recover. I was hearing you were riding the, uh, what's that called, Space Mountain. Oh, that's a trip, man. <laughs> I was When I got off the ride, my mouth was open, and I was just staring straight ahead. I was like, whoa. <laughs> Don't you think you're going to hit them bars? You know, those bar- it's real dark in there, and you see these bars coming up, and you think, Oh, no, man, this is going to decapitate me. It's funny that you mentioned that. Uh, my friend Jack, who's on the ride with me, he's yeah. like, he's like my friend last year, he put his hands up and he hit a bar. Oh, yeah. So I was like, and he's like, put your hands up. I was like, no. You just told me someone got hit by a bar. <laughs> and what are you doing, like 40 miles an oh, hour man, or you something? Got, you're a fl- uh, who knows? It's like pitch black, and then you, they've got all the disco lights going. Right, right. And you, you just have no idea where you are, what you're doing. All you can just feel the... Geez, going back and forth. It's awesome. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> it is. Disneyland, I don't care. You know, I don't care how many times I've gone. I, I can remember going there as just a little child. We lived out in the desert east of L.A. and um, out near Yucca Valley, Barstow area, and until I was nine, and then we moved up here. But, you know, on, on occasion, you know, we'd head to, head to L.A. and, of course, go to Disneyland and all. And I can remember looking up at that, uh, the, not the... What's that one with the got the kind of the snow cap mountain that the right Matterhorn. Here? The Matterhorn. I can remember looking at that thing and going, Oh my, I can't ride on that. That's just that's a big person's ride, you know. And so they got they still have that. I was down there what a few years ago. They still have that ride, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. It is fun with the they have the Yeti up there and he comes out yeah, it's pretty fun. His mouth is big, but we don't hold that against him. I'm going to have to go ahead and sort of disagree with you there. This is the Eddie Burke Show on Smart Radio, AM 700 KBYR. Alaskan owned and operated. Mr. Z-Man, how you doing? You okay? You got your green sock hat? I never understand how you, you young people can wear those hats that you pull down. My head just itches. And I, I don't have any hair. I mean... I mean, I'm bald, or, you know, close to it. I mean, I keep my hair sh- cut real, real short, so... It feels it, good. It does it? Yeah. It, I, I mean, don't know. I, it just makes well, you got Well, you've got the little short hairs, and they probably rub up against there. Even when I had long, long, you know... Really? I, mean, I, 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 I like it. I know. You, that's kind of the gangster thud look, thug look. Is no, that it? no, that's the white boy look. Is that white boy Right, thug? right. That, that's, that originated from us white boys. Oh. And then the gangsters... Well, actually originated from, like, the skaters slash snowboarders. Skater, that's it. So, yeah. And that's where I come Them from. Those skater so. people are kind of nasty looking. You know, it's like they don't wash. Well, they, it's you called, ever notice that? Well, they don't grunge. care. Yeah, it's, they don't. We, what is that? All my friends, why we, would you we don't care. Why would you want to be dirty? We, we don't Grungy care. looking. We don't care. Yeah, but, but why would you want to do that personally? Why do these people do that personally? I mean, what 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 is the what is the glorification of, what is the self-satisfaction of, of looking grungy? Well, a lot of my friends are musicians, right? Yeah. So they get chicks no matter what. So they don't care. You see what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. They don't have to present themselves any any way that they At don't want to. At what age do they change? They don't have they actually as you when get when they become unpopular. Well, I no, guess, as you get older, they, they get showers. more popular. Typically, um, a rock star he has to be in the uh, business about 40 years before he becomes famous. Here's a newsflash for you: There's no rock stars in Anchorage. Okay. Oh, I beg to differ. There's there might. I beg to differ. There's some people that might think they're rock no. Stars. I've been just because 15 people know that you play the guitar doesn't. Make I've you a I've rock been star. to some shows where people were fainting and I you, I don't think you know what you're talking about. <laughs> just because you can get a hundred people to show up and listen to you play the guitar doesn't make you try a rock. like four or five hundred stuffed into a small you know yeah. establishment. There's hardly any oxygen and their their shirts are all off and sweat and and. Goo is flying all over the place. Goo. Yeah, I'm talking I, I tell human you what, goo I, I, all I'll, over the place. I'll, I'll let that. I'm going His mouth is big, but we don't hold that against him. Maybe there's a compromise here, though. 
There's always a compromise. This is the Eddie Burke Show on Smart Radio, AM 700 KBYR. Alaskan owned and operated. When I heard Barack Obama state in one of his interviews on national television that his wife was off limits, meaning family's off limits, you know, attack me, I'm the public official, come after me, I can handle it and we'll duke it out if need be, but family's off limits. I naively believed, okay, they, they respected that in him, in his um, demand for, for that to be um, adhered to, naively believing, oh, that must apply to all of us, right? But it didn't apply. You know, and that's, that's a shame that Obama is respected, his wishes are respected. In fact, it's been a general rule within presidential candidates, vice presidential candidates, that, that the, the family is off limits. And uh, it's interesting, I, I would like somebody from maybe the news media to explain to me why our governor is not, and her, her family's not off limits. I know why. why. Because they can't get anything on her. That's why. I mean, they just can't get anything on her, so they go after her children. Here's another clip. Sorry, it's in the little... I believe marriage is meant to be a sacred institution between two unwilling teenagers. <laughs> yeah, that's the... Uh, that, she talks about it. Lisa. That's the Tina Fey. Um, well, that makes the mama grizzly rises up at me hearing things like that you know here again cool fine come attack me but when you when you make a suggestion like that 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 certainly attacks a kid that kills me it kills me here's something uh z-man were and i were pondering off the air it's like okay now according to the editor patrick doherty down there i had a conversation with him and then he had some formal responses here in the paper he says, now he's responding to, if you're just tuning in, he's responding to the issue, why is his reporters, or why is the paper pursuing this, in his words, a nutty nonsense story, quote unquote, about whether or not Trigg is Sarah Palin the governor's child or not, you know? And, and it's been all over the tabloids and all, but now his paper... So he says one of his justifications, his line of thinking, his line of thinking, his justification says, in fact, my integrity and the integrity of the newspaper have been repeatedly attacked in national forums for our complicity in the quote unquote cover up. I have personally received more than a hundred emails accusing me in the paper of conspiring to hide the truth about Trigg's birth. Uh, in a parenthesis about Trigg's birth, so I guess if you have enough people <laughs> complain, if we com if we get a hundred people to call in to call down at the Anchorage Daily News and tell the Anchorage Daily News that actually, let's see, let's create some sort of story. Right, I got well, one. maybe the maybe the people can help us create this. Well, no, story. no, let's let's create our own story. Well, I let's create one, and then maybe someone okay, else has got sure. a better story. This, that, that this, this is the one that you came up, and I liked it the best. It's Governor Palin's child is an alien. Yeah. Okay, so if we can get 100 people to call in to there the ADN and ask them and question their integrity on whether or not... They're Governor, covering it up. Right, they're covering up the fact that Governor Palin's baby is an alien. Right. If we put enough pressure on the ADN... They'll, they're they'll do, they're going to research it. They're going to research it. Because, you know, That's be, questioning even their though <laughs> in their own words, it's nutty and nonsense. Right. They still have to pursue it. They because, gotta pursue it. You know, they're looking into the psychological, uh, the, 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 well, the psychological effects of all this. Right. The, the rumors about it, and and the the, cons the, the the continuous look at this story. So they were just trying to seek out the truth. Now, one of the ways it's been reported is they're seeking out the truth. They even go to Bristol School, right, to see to try to pull up records and all. They call Sarah Palin's doctor. And threaten to put a no comment in the paper and all this and, and, and get him out of bed. And they actually called her father, right? And, and, and called, Chuck? Uh, I believe uh, Chuck, he said that, or at least Chuck said that they, they were calling they, her. They were asking around about it. So, uh, so what we need is 100 people to call the ADN and question their integrity and say that they want to know the truth about Governor Palin's baby. Alien baby. Trick alien is baby. really not. Right. Trigg is an alien, actually. Uh, technically, well, technically, according to conspiracy, according to the conspiracy, right, that we believe that you know questions so, their integrity. 
So now our job is to call down to the Daily News. I'll do it. You'll do it. 257-4200 is the paper. The, 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 I'm giving out phone numbers again, by the way. Right. 257-4200 is the Daily News. If we can get 100 people down there to call, the next phone call that Patrick Doherty and his news crew at the Daily News will make is to the doctor, and they'll probably try to go to Bristol School or whatever to try to figure out. They'll Whether probably try to get some DNA or something. Yeah. They'll probably ask the Palins to prove it. Right. Prove that it's not an alien. Of course. And let's go to Mark on line one. Mark, welcome to the program. Hey, Eddie. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Appreciate it. Um, the, the, the subject is, it kind of brings up a lot of emotions. It's near and dear to my heart. Yeah. Um, I wasn't going to call in today, but uh, it, that's a little over the top, man, because my little, my, my little brother's an alien. Yes. And and yeah, and now that I think about it, I got two uncles that are aliens. <laughs> Hold on, if I really think about it, I think my mother-in-law's an alien. <laughs> well, it, we just want the Daily News to investigate this because well, you know what you if, if aliens hundred, anyway. Wait, if what hundred, do you got against? Go ahead. What do you got against aliens? Hey, well, I, I've got a lot. You know? I, I, well, hey, I don't have anything against Trig if he's an alien, <laughs> but I do have something against. Patrick Doherty, if he's an alien. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because anybody that works down there at the Daily News and that goes out and asks questions and calls the school about Bristol's records and, and asks a question and bothers the family about whether or not Trigg is the, is, the, is the son of the governor, you know... It's just ridiculous. I heard they want they want her ambionic fluid. They, they yeah they, they want, want her fluid ambionic and blood. fluid. <laughs> That's what the Daily News wants. They call it nutty nonsense, folks. Patrick Do Doherty says it's nutty nonsense. But by the way, would you please give up some of your ambionic fluid? Well, I just want to say to make this work, it has to be something that kind of relates to what the original story was. Yeah. But it has to be so outrageous that, that it's. I mean, it's totally you know. And this, I think it's a good example. I think I it was too. a good idea. I'm going to continue with it until. But I we get... need people to call into the Anchorage Daily News. So remind them. Two five seven forty two hundred. Or you can email them at editorsblog at ADN, AnchorageDailyNews.com. Talk to Patrick Doherty and tell him that Eddie Burke show is looking into whether or not that Trig is an alien. Right. Okay? Because if we get 100 people, according to the Patrick Doherty, we get 100 people to call him, heck, his credibility, his integrity, quote unquote, his stake? integrity and the paper's integrity is at stake if they don't investigate it. Here's what I want you to do. Call um, Patrick Doherty down there, 257-4200, out at the Daily News, and, and tell him that Eddie Burke is inquiring whether or not that you heard on the show, and he is inquiring it, and myself. Sorry, I'm not trying to talk to myself in the third party or nothing. But that, uh, um, that I believe that Trigg is an alien. And, and that you want the Daily News to find out about that. And so if 100 of us call down there, according to Patrick Doherty, 257-4200 down at the Daily News, it, listen, listen to his logic. Listen to this editor's logic. I mean, this is the Daily News, folks. This is who we've been telling you about for years. Um, be, here, here it is. Because we have been amazed... Okay? Amazed! This is the editor speaking. <laughs> because we have been amazed by the widespread and, listen to this part, enduring quality of these rumors. There's quality to them now. <laughs> now, above here, he calls it nutty nonsense. Okay? Nutty nonsense, quote unquote, about the whole thing, whether or not Trigg is the governor. But right down here, he says, it's because it, he says, I want to be very clear on this. I have, from the beginning, and do now consider the conspiracy theories about Trigg's birth to be nutty nonsense. Because we have been amazed by the widespread and enduring quality of these rumors, I finally decided, after watching this go on unabated for months, to let a reporter try to do a story about the conspiracy theory that would not die, quote-unquote, and possibly report the facts of Trigg's birth thoroughly enough to kill 
the nonsense. So, it, what is this? Some sort of psychobabble way to inter, to inject themselves in the story and to write a story, and and now it's blew up in their face, and, and they're now he's now defending himself by contradicting himself. One moment it's nonsense, it's nutty nonsense, and then the next moment, the enduring quality of these rumors. <laughs> is this guy on dope or what? I mean, give me a break, Pat Doherty. What's his email? Get and, his and email. they're complaining. And the Daily News is complaining while they're losing money, <laughs> and and they don't, you know, and they're all going to be out of work down there. Um, what is Pat Doherty's number uh, email? Editor, editor's blog. That's editor's plural. Editor's blog at an dot adn dot com. Editor's blog at an dot adn dot com. All right, let's get to the phones. Mark on three two seven four five two nine seven. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, you know what tomorrow's headline's going to be, right? <laughs> no. The local radio host calls calls him an alien. Yeah, <laughs> local radio host <laughs> says Trig is an alien. <laughs> and then I'll have the National Enquirer, and then and that rumor will go on throughout the United States for six months. And and then guess what? And then I'll and then have it'll the be, uh, we don't re- we don't make the news. We just report on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the Daily News will be calling up here going, well. Is there really any truth to that? <laughs> because the enduring quality of the room. I'm the 40-year-old white guy, the women hater. Huh? The women hater where they had all them signs out. And guess what some of them said? They said about Sarah Palin, two white and too right. Or actually it went too right and too white. They also had one that said we don't we can't have another bush in the White House. And you know what that means. Yeah. That's a sexist remark. Calling the governor the wicked witch is dead. Yeah. And here it is. Uh and here hope this is in response to the campaign that Obama won. Hope has won out over fear, hatred and ignorance. Hey, if I miss can get another job, so can Eddie. This is the Eddie Burke Show on Smart Radio AM 700 KBYR. Uh, that's uh, that's unfortunately Hamas individuals, Palestinians yelling at the Jews. No, it was a, <laughs> it was a uh, um, Palestinian pro-Palestinian rally yeah. in Florida. That was an American. Yeah. In case you're wondering. Yeah. No. No. I it, you, we had discussed that. Yeah. Earlier. Yeah. An American said that. Yeah. You it's need disgusting. to go back to the ovens. Yeah. It's pretty disgusting. Joan writes in and says, the story of the towel business has been debunked. If there was a story regarding, uh, among all those other, I believe, BS stories, that we're talking about Sarah Palin uh, during the campaign, and one of the instances where he, she met one of the aides in a towel, a bath towel, I, I don't know what the big deal with that is. I mean, she probably just got out of the shower, there's someone on the door, and I mean, she, <laughs> I mean, what? what's the big deal? I just don't get it. Well, Bill Clinton Happy answered the door <laughs> with his pants down for crying out loud, and no one's talking about that. Oh, she could have left him out there with the bears attacking him, you know. Uh, just, I don't get it. Airplane, you know? <laughs> I opened the door in my boxers. I mean, I, you know. Well, I, I opened the door with nothing on, figuring it was the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> At least she didn't try to molest hey, those guys. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't get it, man. All right, where are we at here? So now we're with Wooten Gate. Okay, now Z-Man got this hot idea last Friday, and I didn't get to play this clip, but Z-Man was thinking to himself, listen, Wooten was never fired, and, and he was never fired. Let's, let's, let's look at it. What happened? Governor Palin 
let him s said, hey, listen, I've got another place for you to work over here with the alcohol, tobacco, or uh, alcohol um, beverage control board. There you go. And it was a position leading that, uh, heading that up for bootleggers up in the up in the uh, bush and all like that, taking care of responsibilities in that direction. All right. So he refused, and when he refused, well, you know, the other job was no longer available, so he refused, and because he didn't like to take that job, which I think would have been a step down for him in his mind, though it paid relatively the same, he was uh, dissatisfied that, so he left. That's what happened. That's exactly what happened. Even, you know, Monaghan's not, Sarah Palin never said, you're fired. She said, here's another job. He said no, so the only alternative was for him to quit, I guess. That's what he wanted to do. That's what he chose to do. Now, the media and everybody keeps going around saying, well, Monaghan was fired. Monaghan was fired. Monaghan was fired. Now, I understand that that's not the whole, that's not always what the case is about. The case is more about did, did Monaghan or did Sarah, the governor, use her power, abuse her power to try to get Wooten fired? But this is a story in itself is because the media is out there saying that Monaghan was fired. And it's simply not true. So, all right. This is how long of a clip? It's like three minutes. Three minute clip. Be patient. Listen to the conversation that Z Man has. Now, Z Man, you called her and you kind of just acted as you were in. You didn't tell her you were the radio station. She does. She does know she's being recorded. Right. And you gave her a scenario in which we felt was very comparable to uh, what actually took place. And she was just basically answering questions. She didn't know who you were or what you were doing or anything like that. But now, she. Well, Governor Palin, when she came on the television the day after, and she said, I never fired Wooten. I offered him another position, and she said it was like a stage five or whatever uh, paid position. And, and that, I mean, that just shows you it wasn't, a, it wasn't, there was no malice behind what she was trying to do. She wasn't trying to terminate him. She was just saying, you know, I'm dissatisfied with the, the work you've given me so far, so I'm going to, and I still value your opinion, so I'm going to give you this other position. But the media turned it all around and said, look, she fired him. And I think the way that works is uh, a commissioner levels like 26, 27, or 26 maybe, and then she, he would have had a a, sta uh, a level 25 job or something like that. So, right, so it's, it's not a huge difference. In, no, not a huge he difference. He wasn't like he was going from a 26 to a 14 or something. And think of the two words. The, the truth is that he got demoted. He was not fired. Okay, demoted demotion says, well, I, I trust your opinion, right. but I'm gonna I'm gonna demote you. I'm, I'm, it's a punitive word. It's a punitive measure. Sure. Termination is something completely different. All Termination right. means you're fired. Let's play the clip. This is with Z Man, and the st uh, lady from the Department of uh, Labor. Well, how about I give you the scenario and you tell me? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was gonna say. Okay. Well, I came in and he said that I wasn't doing an adequate job, and that. Uh, he was going to let me go. And then he offered me another position uh, around the same pay, but it was a different job. And I told him, no, I didn't want to do it. So, I, you know, I pretty much told him no. And that's the situation. Oh. Well, let me just read this. Okay. And you, you didn't want to take that job? No, I didn't want to take why it. why you didn't want to take that job? I thought it was beneath me. Even though it's the same pay and same pretty much department. Okay. So may I ask what the job would have been? Uh, I've been working with uh, some of the other staff. Um, you want to know specifically? Well, because I know one was a webmaster. Right. Okay. And obviously design websites and that kind of stuff. Is that correct? Right. Okay. So... It would be like secondary webmaster. Okay, so instead of being like the main person, you right. be second person. Right. Same pay? R pretty much. You just didn't want to be beneath somebody else? Right. I think you had supervisory skills. Well, I mean, I had this position in the first place. Why, you know, why offer me a lesser position? You had a choice to stay employed, even if it wasn't a separate job. Right. Okay. I'm just kind of reading to figure this out here, okay? So that's why I'm asking the question moving party is the party who having the choice to continue the relationship act to end it. You acted to end it. Okay, so there's you're the moving party, okay? Now, let's go back to sub 
or whether it's quit or discharge. Now, um, with, okay, since you did not accept the secondary position, he was going to let you go. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm going to put you on hold here, okay? Sure. Just kind of read this and kind of make sure I get the right one. Absolutely, like I understand. I said, yeah, you do have a really fine line. Fine line. Yeah, okay, just one. I'm going to put you on hold. You get to listen to the music. Okay. I will be back. Do not hang up, okay? All right. Okay, we are going to look at this as a voluntary leave because I'm going to read this thing, thing to you, okay? A volu so I quit. You quit. Oh, I did quit. So it, let me read it and you'll understand why, okay? Okay, explain to me why. Okay. If work was available to the other work to the worker, no matter how unsatisfactory, right. the worker chose not to work. The right. worker is the moving party, and the separation is a voluntary leaving. So I quit. Yes. Oh, okay. Cool. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> That's what I, you're easy to please. Well, I do. I am very pleased. <laughs> so, All right. That's good enough. <laughs> so here you go. There's a lady from the uh, from the Department of Labor. She understood she was being recorded. She did not know that, you know, of course, this was a scenario. So I, what I want to ask of you guys is call me in. What do you think? Is that is that an appropriate comparison? Is that a um, – did, did Z-Man do his job by, by giving the lady a fair understanding of, of what actually took place with, with Sarah and, and the – or the governor and uh, Walt Monaghan? Give me your call, 274-5297, 274-5297, or was it not fair? Did, it, did he not give her the same analogy or the same uh, illustration or whatever? Let's go to uh, who we on, who we got here. Eric? Eric on line two. Hey, how you doing? Good, uh, my friend. It, I, I guess from what, you, what, what I heard on the tape, it sounds reasonable to me to, to compare the two. The jobs are different, but the circumstances sound like you, uh, you described it similar, similarly. This, right. this is what I don't understand. Okay, first of all, he says that she never told him. Monaghan says that he never was told by the governor or in his office or her office to fire Wooten. So, boom. To fire Monaghan. Or, yeah, yeah you're right. To, mo to fire Wooten. Right, right, right. Right, so there. Then that, that whole question is gone. He already said that he was never told that. Well, even some radio host says, I don't think that maybe she's done anything ethically wrong or even illegally wrong. Well, if she hasn't done anything illegally or ethically wrong, then what in the hell are we doing? Right. Why are we spending $100,000? Why are we $1, spending more than $100,000? More than $100,000. So that, that's the first part. And then the second part is, well, they're saying that she fired him because of... Uh, that she was unsatisfied unsatisfied with, with his with, with Monaghan's with him, work not, and therefore she fired him which you just proved, proved that he didn't fire he didn't fire her no, so she didn't fire she, him she didn't fire him for right. that reason so I don't understand why we're wasting a hundred thousand uh, dollars on an investigation it's it's great radio but other than that that's about all it is right. thank you let's go to the phones let's go to David on line two David you're up on the program oh, did yeah, we yeah, skip Bev did. Did I skip Bev from before? Okay, David on line two. Go ahead, Dave. Okay, Eddie. Hey, um, yeah, you guys are doing a great job. By the way, Z-Man, that was uh, pretty impressive um, undercover work there. Wasn't that cool? <laughs> do you, do you know mean, what I had to do to get that? I had to have Justin fire me and then go through that whole conversation and then have him rehire me half an hour later after I called the office. It was great. Oh, oh I see. You make it realistic, huh? Yeah. Yeah, hey, that's cool. But uh, you guys are doing a great job. I think... Um, I agree with everything you guys are saying. One thing I wanted to point out to you, you and your station, especially you, you Eddie Burke, is uh, you guys are the only ones out there in the Anchorage Bowl here that are actually uh, defending Sarah Palin. I mean, I'm just looking for the truth. Well, and, you guys, and, and if I have, and, and if somebody says I'm not, well, then tell me where I'm wrong. Well, what I'm saying is that there's an obvious double standard to the rest of the so-called conservative talk show hosts. Um, they they really, really had an innocent until proven guilty um, attitude towards Dan, uh, right towards um oh, Ted yeah. Stevens. <laughs> but good night, Sarah Palin. She can't do anything right. That's exactly it. You know, and that's it's, exactly it's, it's it. An obvious double standard, and uh, I think they should be. I think that's the news story. Well, and two, it. I tell you what happening. You know, and some people say, well, there's no such thing as a wrong or right side of an issue, but there's a thing called credibility. And I think when after after enough time, people start looking at one's credibility and they start saying, you know, this guy keeps coming out on the uncredible side of an issue. And after a while, I think that that starts to uh, peel away from their listenership. 
I, I believe that most well, reasonable thank, people will. I Thanks, David. I appreciate that. Eddie Burke is on the Alaskan Airways. Beaming from Prudhoe Bay to Homer. On AM 700. KBYR. Hey. <laughs> Folks, listen, I've got to make this announcement. I was just told. I was just told. Huh? You got it? Is Chris here? Hello? Hey, Chris, turn down your radio or whatever you got going on there. Chris? What do we got going, Z-Man? Are you going to be able to pot him up? All right. Chris just called. Yeah, okay. Chris, Chris just called. Chris just called and says, well, let me set it up for you guys. All right. We all know that the, the Fagan went on uh, Dennis Miller's show yesterday. Fake and bacon. Fake and bacon. The traitor. The one that called you a bunch of welfare recipients. The That's liberal. What, the yeah, liberal. Yeah. He's, he's the anti-Palin, the trasher, the hater, whatever. All right. Okay. So he went on Dennis Miller's show yesterday and trashed Alaska. All right. And... Then today, a bunch of Alaskans called the Dennis Miller Show because our news director here, Amy, Amy Fakes, uh, happened to be, you know, she, that's her job to tune in and see what other news people are doing. She was uh, on an air and she heard it. And she heard that Alaskans were calling in just trashing Dan Fagan, telling Dennis Miller he was a worthless piece of, you know, and, and that he didn't know what he was talking about and he was wrong and all this. Well, guess what? Dennis Miller has just apologized for having a damn Fagan on his show. <laughs> he apologized. He apologized. <laughs> Can you imagine that? A national talk show host made a public apology for having the dude on. Here's the kicker. His show, his show is right before Dan Fagan's show. I know. <laughs> so everybody tuning in to Fagan's show. <laughs> Got to hear all that. Oh, my goodness, the life. You know, but here's the serious thing about it, and I'm, I'm going to get back to Mark Fish here because he's he's the, the, the adult here in the crowd. And he's a Navy veteran, a homeowner, and a lifelong Alaskan. I bet you're, you're quite a ladies' man, huh? And he's taking your calls right now at 274-KBYR. I'm going to take you downtown with me. This is the Eddie Burke Show. Talk radio for the rest of us. We really, really support the truth on Smart Radio. AM 700, KBYR. Ha! Ha, ha, ha. Let's see here. A guy taking, uh... The Tim, Tim's taking some jabs at you there, Z. The Z-Man scenario is worthless. Since the definition you received was what the state counts for paying a claim. But that is very restrictive definition. Who said... When did the lady... We weren't asking her who gets to pay or whatever. We're asking what the state defines as fired. That is correct. It, it just because they, they do the work, they're part of the... Who did you call? The Department uh, of Labor? I called an employment office to see whether The Department I, of Labor, right? Right, right. Whether I, well, not, I was fired or I quit. Tim's I, saying, well, because they made a decision based on who gets paid, well, who... What does it matter who gets paid? I mean, that it's the technical term because that's what you, it constitutes... I mean, that's where we get the law of what's she fired and what's not law. fired. She defined the law in that tape. She said, if the, it doesn't matter how insignificant the other position is, if you quit, you take on, she later on says that you take on all the responsibility of leaving that position upon yourself when you quit. Okay, now here, here's the catch that the haters want to get us into. No, no, that Tim's not a hater. But Tim's saying, if you were really looking for the truth, you would not be attempting to stop the investigation. Just because something, just because you want something to stop, an investigation to stop, doesn't mean you're trying to hide something. Maybe it's because it's so bogus that it doesn't need to continue. Well, that wasn't really my point. Well, at but all. let the investigation go forward, Eddie. Then we can really see. Right. I want the investigation to go forward. All right. Well, let's just investigate everything. <laughs> That's a good point, though. <laughs> No, the reason why I did this, the reason yep. why I was sitting at home I thinking about I think you're a bad guy. Let's investigate it to prove you're not. No, no, no. The, but my problem is is that the media constantly uses this word fired. She says that they keep saying that Governor Palin fired Woot Monaghan, and that is a Walt Monaghan. lie. Walt yeah, Monaghan. Right, right, and that right. is a lie. That All is right. a lie, lie, lie. Everybody who repeats that sentence, that Governor Palin fired right, let's Monaghan, is lying. Calls. Angela on line two. 
two seven four five two nine seven. Angela, um, was that Z man who called Department of Labor? Yes. Okay. Um, and they did know they were being recorded, by the way. Yes, I, I've okay. heard the. I've listened to you. Okay, all right. Um, one thing that they probably responded to him was the fact that he, they he they probably thought that he was a regular general government employee. Right. Now there's a difference in hiring with the state of Alaska, and um, I'm going to get nervous here. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's cool. Just um, keep keep talking about it because the point I wanted to make, and I'll, I'll just kind of interact with you a little bit, Angela. Okay. And then that way it'll help your nerves too. Okay. And, and so what happens is, is the point I thought was, it's even more inside of what what um, it's more along those sides of what Z Man found because he's an at will employee. So the 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 restrictions upon firing him are far less than a regular employee and 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 okay. his that's, what, that's what I wanted to clarify okay go ahead because um, the commissioner's job is an exempt position correct and an exempt position is not included in the collective bargaining unit correct which means that he has absolutely no protection right so and he is totally at the governor's whim exactly about when she wants you know, if she wants to you know tell him hire him today and tell him to go tomorrow that's her she can do that exactly that is her job and right. um so that makes it that gives her more rights to be uh well it, it it gives opportunities for her to even be more flexible with how she wants to handle him exactly right exactly and and you didn't what, have to offer him another job no at all but Z-Man's point is is that everybody runs around and says that the governor fired Monaghan, which in fact did not happen. Exactly. Right. And exactly. It's, and then of course we all know is because he's an exempt employee, Angela, like you rightfully brought out, that she has total right to fire. I mean he could come in with his hair a different color and say, Hey, Walt, you're out of here. That's right. right. And and those um exempt positions go all the way down to the directors of um Correct. Of uh different levels of uh oh I forgot what No, no, you're are. right. Different different <laughs> positions in state government. Yes, exactly. You're, you're absolutely yeah. correct, yeah. Angela. And and the reason I know that is because I work personnel for right. about six years and um and was aware of, you know, these exempt positions. Right. Um so um I and I I'm not gonna say personnel like personnel um hiring or firing, but the paperwork that passed through my desk, sure. you know, was a lot about yeah. that. Yeah. Z-Man wants to ask you a question, Angela. Hold okay. On. Okay, Angela, in the newspaper, uh, let's see here, this is uh, September 2nd, it says, Palin's lawyer challenges query into Monaghan, Mo is that Monaghan? Yeah. Monaghan's firing. Now, is that true or false? Not when she offered him a job. Exactly my point. It. So this newspaper that I'm reading right here is technically wrong. Wrong. And, it's a and lie. It's a exactly. lie. It is a lie. Right. And so every newspaper in America is what? Lying. Exactly my point. Exactly. Thank you. Is is that? Are you there, caller? Butter. Oh, you guys can't handle it. What Buttero? How do you say Boudreau. your name? Boudreau. Boudreau. Hey Boudreau, yeah. would you take care of Warren for me? Yeah, you wouldn't be laughing so hard if they tried to give Ted Stevens a black man for a gift, would you? Oh, see that. See that. Yeah, <laughs> see there, Warren? What That's about right. that? Don't, don't ignore, right. ig ignore the question that I, I'm asking. The, what the about that, people. Warren? I'm asking Alaska people. If Boudreau! Sarah, if Sarah no. being her own woman, Sarah being her own woman, if she would say, I'd like to go back to Alaska, raise my children in Alaska, and I refuse to, the vice okay. president say, okay, how okay. would Alaska feel about Sarah? You, you, you so asked that. I told you it was ridiculous. Boudreaux, what do you think? Yeah, you don't want to answer I'm that for, question. I'm all for reparations, my brother. I'm all what for reparations. Doing, I what think, you doing I think with I, Sarah? You selling her out? For the, for the slavery that they did to us, I think they should give us a, a free one-way ticket back to our country of origin. That's <laughs> what I think they should do with us, all of us. <laughs> Send us back in. Well, you know, I don't understand. I just, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be serious here. I don't understand what the deal is with these people who are saying so are these black people. Is that what you mean? No, 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 no. Not, I'm not talking about, about. I'm not talking about. The, be careful now. I don't want to. I don't want to sound like I'm like other people. Yeah, you people. What you talking about? You people. Hold on a minute. I am. They are these people who uh, somehow want to prevent they? Sarah Palin from making a decision as a woman to run for office. Hire the, for the president for the vice presidency of the United States. Is she a bad woman? Uh, not the last time I checked. Does it matter? 
Yeah, it matters. Well, how does it matter? Because she, she's going to get some reparations, too. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to reparate everybody. Boudreau, are you going to get any uh, reparations? I'm going to get some representation for some reparations. (laughs) (laughs) All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, Boudreau, did you have a point? You didn't get my point, my brother? (laughs) No, I got it. That's why I'm moving forward. (laughs) You're good sport, man. I got to bounce. All right, later. All right, let's go wait, to... Wait, I know why Warren wants... He keeps saying this. I know why. Okay, Warren knows that Governor Palin has made a huge impact on the Republican ticket. That's exactly what I and told him. And he's saying... He's afraid Obama's going to lose. Exactly. He's, right. he's like, bring her home because, you know, her kids. Right. He's saying everything that the media is saying. Right. Bring her home because right. she's going to win. Right. Bring her home because she's going to win. Exactly. Because she's going to beat my guy. Exactly. Because he can't beat a girl. <laughs> This context, there's no disrespect, so when I bust my rhyme, you break your neck. Let's get it started. Ha! Let's get it started in here. Let's You're get listening it to the Eddie Burke Show. Ha! Call 274-KBYR or toll free at 1-800-866-610-KBYR or log on to www.kbyr.com for the blog. And more from Smart Radio and 700-KBYR. Well, let, let's just list this for a second. John McCain says he's about change, too. Except, and, and so I guess his whole angle is, watch out, George Bush, except for economic policy, health care policy, tax policy, education policy, foreign policy, and Karl Rove-style politics, we're really going to shake things up in Washington. That's not change. That's, that's just calling some, the same thing something different. But you know you can you know you you can put a uh, lipstick on a pig. It's still a pig. If this was Hillary Clinton, all right? Being called a pig. If it was just if the tables were turned and it was the Republicans referring to a Democrat nominee woman as a pig as a stinky fish where do you think the feminist groups would be where would they be you know way right where they would be let me play devil's advocate with you a little bit okay eddie all right clearly he was talking about mccain's policies he wasn't talking about sarah palin she what he wasn't saying that she was a pig your response he called her a pig. No, he didn't say that. He said he, he called her a pig. He was talking about no. McCain's policy. Here's the reason why he called her a pig. Okay, tell me. Is be- before what you don't hear in that clip, because what was going on is, get rid of the pit in um, in the pit bull. Get rid of the pit bull. Get rid of the pit bull. And then he made his response following that comment. If I would agree with you. If if those chants wouldn't have been said first, and secondly, but more importantly, if Sarah Palin wouldn't have said that uh, during her speech about lipstick on a pig, then you might have an argument. But because Sarah Palin started this lipstick on a pit bull deal, I'm sorry, I meant to say it that way, but since Sarah Palin started the lipstick on the pit bull comment, th- by him saying what he said is calling her a pig. That's it. I agree with you, and and I think the reason why I agree with you is as you as you hear him saying it. Well, by the way, I don't need you to agree with me. No, no, I'm just it doesn't really matter. I know it doesn't matter. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying that, that <laughs> when uh, when he says lipstick on a pig, the whole crowd starts roaring. Ah! And, and they he, know what he's talking and about. And they know exactly what he's they talking know, about. They know. You're right. That's a good point, Z, because they knew exactly what he was saying. And that's why they were cheering, because it was their guy making fun of the opposition. And they knew, good point, Z-Man, excellent point. They knew what they were laughing at. They knew he was calling her a pig. But let's go to Mark on line two. Mark, go ahead. Hey, uh, Eddie, you forgot the most important uh, detail about our governor. Dang. She's civil, bro. She's hot. <laughs> I was 
totally thinking that, man, but I didn't want to say it. Oh, like, man. Hey, she's smoking. Yeah, she's, she's the only honey. vice president anybody's ever wanted to see naked. Hey, for all her, I don't care. I mean, she's pretty. <laughs> He's pleasant to look at, man. I can get my ah, eyes on his soul. That would have been great at the end. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> but it does bring delight. I'd like to hear your views as why the Daily News want, want to know. I think it's so important, the governor's opinion on how she may vote. You know why they, and you know why they want to know that. Basically what they do is that when they, on these questions here, we'll get more into it when we come back from the break, but it's like... <laughs> <laughs> they basically call Ted Stevens a scumbag criminal. Right. And so how in the world are you going to vote for this person? Because you're calling yourself, Governor Sarah Palin. A reformer. A reformer, a maverick, somebody who is against corruption. So there's no way in the world you could ever vote for this indicted scumbag uh, <laughs> senator. I mean, they, they don't, I, excuse me, they don't say that in, this, in these questions, of course. But I think any anybody with a little bit of matter between the ears... Um, would interpret I, I, that. I would forgive her if she just didn't vote this one time. I would forgive her if she just said, "I'm not." Yeah, gonna but that's, vote this that's time. not a question that she's going to get by with. You have to have to in politics. You know. Okay, how are you going to vote, Eddie? I'm going to vote no on both senator. Well, I'm going to vote uh, yes. I, I'm not going to vote for him. I'm, I'm not going to vote for, for either one of them. I'm going to vote for both of them. Well, what do you think about that? That's your opinion. Go, Ted Stevens. Oh eight. Go, go for it. I'm not going to vote for him. The guy's cured. I'll probably vote for Bob cancer. Beard. I'll probably vote for Bob Beard. Of course. Something like that. An independent. Yeah. So just throw your vote to. to Doesn't Obama. matter. No, I'm not throwing my vote. My vote's just as important as anybody else. Right. But I'm not voting for a crook. Okay. That's all I'm doing. I'm not voting oh, yeah. for a crook. For Ted Stevens. I'm not voting for a crook. He's technically not a crook. He. Took, I didn't say he was a crook. He took bribes. <laughs> I'm just telling That's you, I'm different. not voting for a crook. That's all I'm telling you. He's, I'm not doing he's that. He's the best. I don't care ever how much money. I don't care how much money somebody brings home to Alaska. I don't care wh how many buildings they build. I don't care what they've done. Okay, I'm not going there. So that's all there is to it. And you're right. I made up my mind. Uh, and, and I don't have to explain my. You know, everyone that listens to this program knows that I am. Not fond at all of the senator, and and uh, well, not him personally. It's about what he's allegedly done and all. And and but you know, I told you. I said I said you guys think that it's bad now. You wait till after. You wait till the general election starts, and here's just a trickle of it. I mean, they're going to tell us about whether you got a chair and a dog. I mean, come on, you're going to waste. Look it. I had to print this off, and it took two pages, a two-page, eight and a half by eleven, to print this story off today to talk about that he got a chair, and he got a dog. How dare you discredit that chair? Those are comfortable huh? chairs. It's a nice chair. It's a nice chair. I love chair. that. You know those massage chairs? My neighbor's got one of them. I can go over there and sit in that chair, man. That deal comes up your back and all. And Do you, you know, know how much people pay for massages at massage hey, parlors? That's, it's a $2,600 chair. That's what I'm talking about. It's a nice chair. And a dog, too. And a dog. And a gas he grill. He got a sled dog. Yeah, like who cares? Somebody gave him a, a grill. It's a nice huh? grill. Get out of him. It's a Viking. Get out of here. It's it's plugged into your house. I don't care. It's a grill. I mean, these are the kind of things, see, but this is not, this is it. This is about what the deal is, folks. And I told you, the drum beat, see, it's the con constant, 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 constant. So are you voting for a uh, no, for a No, but, but, but I can recognize... Uh, slanted biased journalism when it's apparent okay when it's there Ted Stevens says I didn't know you know I got my house jacked up I didn't pay for that uh, I got all this electrical done I got these different gifts and all but I didn't know I didn't know judge jury come on man it's, he's not denying any of it he's not denying that he got all these things not one bit his whole excuse is that he didn't know I, 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 no. 
He just, he's claiming that it's an overzealous construction company. And basically he said, oh, come in and fix this light fixture. And then they replaced the wall, the, elec- the electric the electric in the wall. They yeah. put up Christmas lights. Yeah. Put in a Viking stove. He's like, wow. And he uh, goes home and, it's, <laughs> and he gets these phone calls, which we're going to hear more of that. We're going to hear recordings of where he gets phone calls and he actually does know about it. And then he, he's going to tell his jury, I didn't know. I mean, get real. Okay, here we go. Stevens alleged gift list grows. Ooh. And you read three paragraphs and all of a sudden, oh, it's a massage chair and a friggin' dog. Okay? Yeah, the dog is this purebred dog. And so let me tell you what a dog's worth. You know what a dog's worth? What if somebody will give you for it? That's what a dog's worth. Okay? Don't tell me, oh, this dog's worth $1,500. Okay. I mean, personally, a sled dog, I wouldn't give you five bucks for a sled dog. That doesn't make them bad dogs. It's just I'm not interested in them. So you're saying that it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. These things don't matter. What I'm interested in is the big picture things, okay? The whole totality of the idea that, look, it, Stevens accepted, you know, Steve got Stevens got his house remodeled, Okay. That's big. That's big money. That's two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and and it's growing. Okay, to me, that's the problem. And it's not just the house. Those are just the things. I I believe there was quid pro quo. I believe that the fishing entity issues where he enriched his son. Um, those are the issues that I have become concerned about. Whether or not he got a dog, whether or not he got a grill, whether or not he got a camera, uh, whatever else they want to come up here with. To me, is ticky tacky stuff, and it's in the in Daily News. Ought to be embarrassed for writing this stuff. What would you rather have? A legislator. <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> a legislator who took took money, or a legislator who used his power to make enrich his friends. And I'm talking about Mark Baggage. Uh, no, was, you you coined it better earlier. We, we I did t- coin it better earlier. Yeah, you were talking about what do you want? You want a crook or you want a scumbag? Yeah, you know. <laughs> You want a crook or a scumbag? Yeah. Choose which one you want. Yeah. Right. One one was just given gifts, and one actually took money from Raped you, from you right. and gave it to a friend. Enriched his friend. That's what Mark so Baggage does. That, right. So. He takes your money, and he takes money friends. from you and gives it to Mark Pfeffer. And, and for Stevens this. just takes money from his rich friends. <laughs> and, and Stevens just takes money from his rich yeah, friends. Yeah, so there which you one do you want? <laughs> I'm voting for Ted Stevens. Go, Ted. If you made me choose, you know, I'd take Ted. <laughs> Because I'd rather have somebody that rapes his friends rather than rapes me. You know, because then I get to watch. (laughs) That's just the kind of guy I am. Hey, as long as I don't have to pay, I'm all for it, right? (laughs) As long as it's a free show. As long as it's a free show, baby, I'm there. (laughs) We'll be right back. Why wouldn't he step down and let somebody else step up? But he said that he's not guilty. And whether you or I agree or not, it was his choice whether to continue or not. Right. And the fact that he did, we need to withhold judgment. And we need to we haven't done a really good job growing our own. I mean we need to do that. And we need to stick to the issues and Please remind people why we don't want baggage. Please, I've lived here too long. With I was here before him. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll stick on it for all the, for the rest of the week. Thank you, know, you. I've always said vote for Ted. Be yeah, a Ted yeah. head. You guys are smoking. We dope. don't have Ted. We're dead. I'm not voting for. A, uh, uh, I tell you what. Hey, if he gets voted not guilty, I'll vote for the guy. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> New Hampshire, and, of and course. And then Beckett, yeah. Beckett was on the list, yeah. Right, right. Is, um, what, are people that attend this, they're like-minded with you, right? Uh, I would say that group would think I'm pretty radical. You would? Is that, I mean... I mean, matter of fact, I was handing out stickers and a lot of people <laughs> wouldn't take them because I'm way more <laughs> radical than they are. They're but was Jane Fond was rub- Jane Fonda there? I disrupt their fundraisers all the time. Matter of fact, when they saw- heard I was coming, they were afraid I was going to picket it. No, you were actually you were actually put as one of the hosts. No, like. no, I know I'm one of the hosts, but I can be a host of an event and picket it. 
Oh, now why would you picket it? Well, because if members of, of Congress are showing up that have voted for the war, I'm outside saying, you know, you did the wrong thing. Um, you know, this weekend it was about that the bailout is wrong. So would and you endorse, who would you? Who do you like more, uh, Ted Stevens or, or Mayor Baggage? Oh, my God, Mayor Baggage. Yeah. And, and Sage. So Code Pink would endorse, if you could, I mean, no, Code, Code Pink, Pink would endorse Mayor Baggage. No, huh? Code Pink cannot endorse anyone. But we if you endorse. could, I matter mean. Of fact, matter of fact, Code Pink doesn't trust anything that happens in Washington. But, I mean, let's just so. say if you had the proper uh, uh, we, IRS we, we, We're not really happy with the entire political structure where corporations are the, you know, get to buy candidates and where you get inside the beltway and you get dumb and you forget that you're representing the people of America and you start representing corporations and the needs and greeds of um, the more powerful. So, um, and you and you make decisions that don't help the people. Here, let me take a call here from David. I appreciate your time with us. Let me take. Hey, okay. go ahead. My my producer is just begging to ask you a question. Go ahead, Z. Okay. Hi, how's it going? Okay, uh, the people in Iraq. It's interesting that you said that they're worse off. Uh, they have a seven seven hundred billion dollar a seventy nine billion dollar surplus right. right now. And and uh, so you're telling me they're be they're worse off now, even though they have a seventy billion dollar surplus with their government what does that have to do with the life of a human being it has a lot to do with the life of a human i mean that is just ridiculous okay they live Let's... in a war zone their kids can't go to school they've been fundamentalist religion has taken over their country women that were free now have to are not allowed to do their jobs anymore women who used to be doctors a woman i know who ran a hospital she's not even allowed to work anymore women aren't allowed to drive um, they, you know, fundamentalist religion. Ma'am, you're a liar. You okay. are a liar, ma'am. No, Go no, back no. to wherever you're from. Hey, you know what? I do appreciate you coming on the show today, Jody, and I hope you'll come back if uh, if I happen to call you, and we'll keep in touch. Send me the emails, too, okay? Thank you, Jody. I appreciate it. Did you cut her off? Why'd you do that, man? Oh, man. Why'd you do I'm, that? I'm pissed. I didn't want you to do that. I'm sorry, you. man. I... I you piss me off when you do that. I'm sorry. Thing. She's a liar. I'm going to jump out of the studio and she knock you out. She is a liar. She, you wait till we go to the break. I'm going to come out of the studio and knock <laughs> you out. Okay, still there for us. David on line one. David, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Right? Yeah, thanks, David. Sorry, oh, I try, I really tried to get you on, man. I, I, I kind of figured it was you, <laughs> and I kind of knew what you were going to give her, and then I, it just she just kind of filibustered out the last second. Oh, man, I, I was... <sighs> I was red faced. I was just could not. I was, people, should I, I was know gonna, that, people should know that if they're not familiar with the program, David, that you have a son that was uh, killed in Afghanistan while serving uh, in a convoy where there was a uh, there was a, uh, a, a double agent, so to speak, in within the convoy that blew himself up and your son. And so, uh, anyways, go ahead. Yeah, it, it just you know, Z Man took my, took the word "you liar." That that was I I couldn't I don't know if I could have contained it. I mean, oh, Z Man I, I, couldn't contain himself. <laughs> he cut her off and everything. I was trying to say goodbye. To her. Let's, talk, let's talk to Greg on line one. Greg, you're up on with McHugh Pierre from the Alaska Republican Party. Greg, go hey, ahead. Eddie, what's your favorite constitutional lawyer? How you doing? Hey, how you doing, Greg? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I, I I'm kind of wondering. I know you're in the business of a talk show host. Yeah, and uh, you're kind of alluding that you know you need to have them on, have guests on there because it's their uh, First Amendment right. If I'm hearing you right, I kind of know where you're going, <clears throat> and, and let me answer. Let me answer the question for you, and it's this way: I want you and all of you to know just what kind of despicable people there are out there, and I use that word pretty, you know, pretty candidly. I mean, I I, I think I'm, in my opinion. I'm being honest in my description of the individual, because based on not personally, just based on what they believe in. McHugh, for, what, for future reference, just so you know, so you can have an out and feel better about not having people like that on your show. Yeah, uh, the courts have said and courts have held that you know they don't have a First Amendment right oh. to fighting words or riotous, <laughs> riotous words or actions or be. Um, so you can uh, actually exclude under the First Amendment. Um, because oh, know, I'm not compelled. No, 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 no. Don't get me wrong. I'm never compelled to bring anybody on. Uh, we got great no, latitude. Maybe make us feel better too, because you know, you know, Z. I think actually Z was actually too nice to her. Calling her a liar. <laughs> hey, you know, I I was I was restrained myself, and and but you know, listen, I bring these people on here because it's I don't want to have just a bunch of sheep. Stations and skills will be asked to serve.
Because when it comes to the challenges we face, the American people are not the problem, they are the answer. We'll call on Americans to join an energy court to conduct renewable energy and environmental cleanup projects in their neighborhoods all across the country. And we're going to grow our foreign service, open consulates that have been shuttered, and double the size of the Peace Corps by 2011 to renew our diplomacy. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well funded. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong. Hey, when, when people are afraid that they're going to lose their gun rights because of this individual... Well, they're afraid of their government is what they're afraid of. Yeah. That's what they're afraid of. Exactly. That's a so, good point. So, all, all you people out there who have voted Barack Obama in, I just want you to know, you're scaring <laughs> a good portion of America. No, I know. I'm just one of those guys who clings to his guns and, and religion. I, you know, I know I'm a hillbilly. You know, I'm just a redneck, maybe, or whatever. But I hold that Second Amendment pretty close. You take all the guns away, just round them all up from law abiding citizens. I mean, it, people know where I'm going. It, does that mean that the bad people aren't going to have guns too? No. They'll be smuggling them in. They'll be finding a way to get them here. And the honest people will be walking around with nothing to defend themselves. I I, I don't understand that. If, if and it's could, not like we can count on the cops to come stand between us and the you know whatever <laughs> robber. Listen. Police officers out there, they're listening to this show right now. I know a lot of them listen to this show, and, and they understand that they're after the fact. Because when you're walking down the street and some gangbanger, some thug wants to say, hey, I'm going to jack you up, I'm going to jack your car, whatever's going on, and, and, and you say, oh, yeah? Well, hey, say hello to this forty caliber. All of a sudden, they, they change their mind. They just really do. It just happens. They just have an instant awakening. You can actually just show it, and that will dissuade people. I've had friends who've done that. They just are like, "Oh yeah, you you wanna, you want my money? You want this too?" And they're like, "Oh okay, uh, see you later." I mean, I'm not into brandishing my weapon or anything. I would think that if I ever had to pull it, that I would, you know, I was going to use it. Hey, how we doing, Maddie? Good. Hey, you know, I was thinking the the, the whole eight year old kid shooting himself in the movie. Yeah, that, that's just taking our perspective because there's kids who kill themselves in 22, so we're going to take the 22s off the street too. Exactly. I, it's just it's a ludicrous um, logic. It's just it's ridiculous. Gumballs kill children. <laughs> Are you gonna take those off the street too? Uh, yeah. All out. <laughs> it, it, it's crazy thinking. Spinard bread and now heard around the world on KBYR.com. Glory, glory, hallelujah. This is the Eddie Burke Show. Well, the truth is that every man struggles with middle age in his own unique way. Talk radio for the rest of us. Well, uh, uh, number one, we're going to have to start doing a better job of conserving on energy. Uh, Americans like to drive their big SUVs. They like to leave all the lights on in their house. If we want to do something serious about that, it's not going to be painless. Uh, we're going to have to cap the emission of greenhouse gases. That means the power plants are going to have to adjust how they uh, generate power. They will pass on those costs to consumers. We will have to guard against low income uh, and fixed income uh, individuals having to pay more for electricity. Uh, but a lot of us who can afford it are going to have to pay more per, u uh, per unit of electricity. And that means we're going to have to change our light bulbs. We're going to have to, you know, Close, uh, shut the lights off in, in our houses. And I think it is important for us to send some price signals to change behavior. You know, if electricity goes up, people start becoming more mindful of their electricity bill. I tell you, that's something else. He's going to force our behavior because he's going to raise prices on the basic needs of human beings, lights, heat, and then he's going to make you that work hard pay more for it and then give subsidies to those who um, work less than you. 
Isn't that interesting? So and I he's guess gonna tax you on top of it. So yeah, it's amazing. Can you believe what? If anybody else would have said these things, they would have never, ever, ever been president. Never. No. The media just fell in love with this guy. I mean, why? How in the world can a guy get by with saying some of the things and the media not drilling him on it? I mean, to say that we're going to have some sort of civilian army and, and the guy gets, just gets a total pass? Nobody makes him define that? Well, there have been extraordinary scenes in Berlin tonight as thousands of people gathered to hear Barack Obama deliver key foreign policy speech on his current European tour. The Democratic presidential hopeful laid out his vision for America's place in a new world order, saying he was speaking as a proud citizen of the United States and a fellow citizen of the world. In Europe, the view that America is part of what has gone wrong in our world, rather than a force to help us make it right, has become all to come. Yes, there have been differences between America and Europe. No doubt there will be differences in the future. But the burdens of global citizenship continue to bind us together. A change of leadership in Washington will not lift this burden. In this new century, Americans and Europeans alike will be required to do more, not less. Partnership and cooperation among nations is not a choice. It is the only way, the one way, to protect our common security and advance our common humanity. Oh! Are forced to have global partnerships between nations and all that. When were we forced to do anything? <laughs> when people push America, we hey, push back. No I one tells us what to do. I didn't vote for the clown. That's all I think I can say is I didn't vote for the guy, man. This is some, this is some far out stuff. This guy's whacked. I mean, you know, and nobody questioned him. I can't say this enough. No one questioned him. No one made him define what he was saying. The reporters, though, over there in uh, Europe, they, they picked it up in, in oh, Berlin. They, they got it. They, one world order. One new world order. <laughs> new world order, yeah. That's what, I'm it. sorry. Nicht wieder schön und herrlich. Wir nehmen euch ihre Blicke bei sich. Mein Lebenskampf ist nicht umsonst gekämpft. Ihr werdet treu sein wie jemals für deutsche Treu sein konnten. Many people who are trying to go inside to vote. Uh, a Republican poll observer uh, actually called the police. The police were here. We missed them. They came and they left. Uh, but that person who called the police uh, is here. Why don't you tell us what you're and step down off the curb if you don't mind. Why don't you tell us what you're suggesting uh, was going on here? Well, as I walked up to the door, we got a phone call that there was intimidation going on. And so as I walked up to the door, two gentlemen in Black Panther guard, one of them brandishing a nightstick, standing immediately in front of the door. As I walked up, they closed ranks next to each other. Uh, you know, I'm an Army veteran. That doesn't scare me. So I walked directly in between them, went inside and found the poll watchers. They said they'd been here for about an hour, and they told us not to come outside uh, because a black man is going to win this election no matter what. So as I came back outside to see, the nightstick turns around and says, you know, we're tired of white supremacy. And uh, it starts tapping the nightstick in his hand, at which point I said, okay, we're not going to get in a fist fight here. And I called the police. The police came and they removed the guy with the nightstick. The person with the wow, maybe that's the kind of uh, army Obama's talking about. Maybe that's his domestic army. The Black Panthers. They were a militia. <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, do you think do you really think that Obama is going to uh, enact all these crazy things that you and I and people that are listening are, are concerned about? Oh, yeah. For instance, like, you know, there's an article today that he's pondering, uh, well, he's pondering on, on reversing President Bush's, uh, well, President Bush opened up the ban on offshore oil drilling. Which initiated this drop in oil price. Yes, it did. And, or at least it's partly reason, uh, because remember, when those oil prices were high, 
they were like $120, $30 a barrel. When Bush did that, there was a, a, de, um, that's a when decline it in price. Yeah. That's when it started, and it's dropped almost 50% since then. Uh, what about, and then also he's talking today about, uh, well, the article is talking about the reversal on the stem cell research. Yeah, it's just basically the trade, the buying and selling of babies' stem cells. I mean, that's that's all that is. And, and of course, working on it. Totally, uh, you don't need to do that anymore. They've figured out that we c they can use our stem cells and do tests on that. But th what uh, Bush stopped was them you know, buying and selling these babies' stem cells after people abort their babies and then buying and tr selling those and doing research on them. And Bush said no. There's also an article on our website today talking about the Christian right regroups after Obama victory. Conservative Christian leader James Dobson confessed he was grieving. Ben Lynn of Americans United for Separation of Church and State said religious separate. What kind of friggin' uh, name is that? United for Separation of Church and State. I mean, just say, hey, you're against religion. You know, Americans United that are for that are in opposition to religion. Yeah, Why don't you, death to Christians. Why don't using they just call some. It? <laughs> yeah, you know, using some sort of constitutional um, or like phrase to to call your group who is opposed to religion is I don't know. It's a it's an abuse of the of the term. Why beat around the bush? Why just, yeah. just kill all the religious people? Tell, yeah, just just hang us all. You know, nail us all to a cross. I mean, that's what they did to Jesus. Hey, let me ask you something. Uh, do you think, Dan, we got uh, Jim Hole and some other folks, just a second, 274-5297. Dan, what do you think? I mean, do you think Obama's going to move through Congress? Most of his, these, uh, well, what I, my, in my opinion, they're p pretty uh, far-left ideas. Well, I I haven't been listening to what, he, what he's uh, well, trying I mean, to do. Well, I mean, for instance, like he's going to yeah. raise, raise I go ahead. I believe that uh, he'll either do it by executive order. He's going to do everything he can to uh, get the. Um, I mean, Europe. The, the people talked about it. The news media in, in Europe uh, hailed uh, Obama's speech in Berlin that uh, it's a forward progress uh, to, to the new world order. Yeah. And, yeah, we played and, those clips. Yeah, and uh, he's what he can't do through executive order. The Democrats are just going to say that's it, man. To get rid of the Christians, to get, to, to get rid of uh, all those people, uh, we got to uh, do the one world order, and they know what the Bible says, so yeah. let them have their day, because uh, we're going to be out of here, then they can all um, party with the Antichrist. Thank you, Dan. Let's go to uh, Jim on line 2, 274-5297. Jim, you're up. Howdy. Hey, Jim. Yeah, I, yeah hello. Yeah, I'm kind of, I want to say I'm kind of religious, but at the same time... I'm pretty sure I can get to the pearly gate, but when I get there, I uh, I got a few questions because I heard these dogs can't get in, and I should get in, but I got a dog, and if a dog can't get in, I I'm serious. I can't see why would I want to go in. I don't know. So you you're you're basing all your beliefs and everything down to a dog. Well, all my beliefs, you know, it's uh, everybody's trying to get in there, and I figure, well, why is it you don't let the dogs in? Are you trying That's to be I funny? Heard. I mean, are you no, trying to be no, funny? Are you really serious, serious Dan? Because yeah, well, okay, well, they don't we, got the right to choose, Jim. You don't? No, they don't. said you don't. They don't know of I sin. Thought, wait a minute, I thought I had a choice. I was given a choice, wasn't I? No, no, no. no you no. are, but dogs, you know. What do you got? One of them little dogs you can put in a box no, no, and carry big, it with you? No, it's a big dog. <laughs> oh. <laughs> half of this You can just that. throw it in a plastic hey, bag and bring it along, Jim. get in, right? No, you know what's going to happen? Oh, Jesus, what? God's going to uh, turn all them big dogs like my dogs. They're going to turn them all mean, and they'll go out and find these heathens, and they'll eat them, kill them. Yeah, yeah that's what they're going to be used for. Yeah, and then they'll, really? and then they'll, they'll come up with us later okay. after, after well, they maul time. a bunch of Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just speculating, people. No, I'm telling you, man, it's written in the Word. <laughs>
His mouth is big, but we don't hold that against him. Maybe there's a compromise here, then. There's always a compromise. This is the Eddie Burke Show on Smart Radio, AM 700 KBYR. Alaskan owned and operated. Monday, we'll be discussing uh, the fair, fairness doctrine. General Manager KBYR and I, Justin McDonald, will be um, discussing the fairness doctrine and what it may mean. Uh, I think it'll have a big impact on talk radio. In fact, I think it'll drive away talk radio, but uh, we'll see what talk radio sta- conservative talk radio stations will have to do, you know. These other radio stations, these liberal left stations, that nobody wants to listen to them. And uh, they aren't able to put a, you know, put a program together to where people are interested. And I tell you, you know, if you, if you can't compete, what do you do? You change the rules. Is that the way it goes? You know, if you can't win, then you change the rules so that you can win. Hey, I can't beat these guys, this team, so let's penalize them. <laughs> We gotta make it fair. Handicap them. It's like yeah. golf. Yeah, we gotta make it fair. It's gotta be fair. Liberals need a voice too. You have a voice. It's called CNN, MSNBC, <laughs> Sam Donaldson, every Katie news- Kurt, every newspaper between here and New York, <laughs> Anchorage Daily News. All right, let's go to. Uh, I think is it Glory, Gloria. On line one there. Gloria, go ahead. Hey. Is that I was is, is it Glory? It's Glory. Good, great. Thank you so much. <laughs> I was wondering if this fairness doctrine ends up going through, what do you see happening with KBYR? Will you be on the radio? Will you go off? If you go off, where are we gonna find you? Well, that's a good question. We were planning on having the general manager here, Justin McDonald, today, but he had to pick up his kids, you know, and he's a family guy, and so what, what what, we're going to have him on tomorrow, but that's a big question, and I wanted to go through that uh, in depth with uh, Justin to see what he thinks, but, you know, basically what the Fairness Doctrine does is it, it mandates that you have to have, if you got three hours of Eddie, right wing, then you got to have three hours of left wing. And the problem with that is that left-wing radio has failed, as you very well know, Glory, that, that's failed all across the country. And therefore, the, the, my show, whatever profits from my show with advertising would have to, what we call, um, what, what's that called? Uh, sub, um, subsidize, subsidize the liberal show. Somehow the, the the station would have to subsidize the show because, I mean, we're here to make a profit. That's the only way we can stay. And unfortunately, um, we'd have to donate airtime to a losing program. And, and unfortunately, you guys, well, and you guys would probably, all of you, would probably turn it off because you don't want to hear it. Good point. You know, it also thinks it seems like it would devastate the Christian radio stations because they wouldn't carry an opposite view. So, well, I mean, it's uh, going to be interesting to see what happens. Uh, you know, well, they you just make, don't carry any view is what they'll do. You make and a very good point. Yeah. They don't do that right now. They don't carry it. And here's here's a, uh, a troubling part of it, Glory, and that is is that um, the news media, I mean, my goodness, y- you read the Anchorage Daily News. There's no balance there. I mean, that they report everything they want. There's no mandate for them to be balanced. Uh, and, and so you just got to read it and, and I guess do what you want. But there would be no mandate for them. There's no mandate for CNN. We know CNN is a, left-lean, a, a left-leaning station. Uh, MSNBC is a, a left-leaning station. And some people could say, well, Fox is... Uh, Fox is right leaning. Well, you know, uh, Fox has been known to be more fair and balanced than in any other station. So, but totally. Anyways, that's we'll get into that tomorrow, and uh, I appreciate your um, concern hey, about it. One other thing for you, on a lighter note. Yeah. You said that Z Man was getting famous. Yeah. We um 
were driving down the road the other day and saw a license plate that said Z-Man. My husband got excited and said, do you think it really is? <laughs> great. I never knew that there was a Z-Man license plate. <laughs> Y'all take it easy. All right, Glory. Thank you so much. I'd really like to know what you mean by democratic change. Okay, let me tell you. Okay. okay you said that I might be voting for Obama because he's black. No, right? I, no, let me repeat what I said. Other than he's black, what would you vote for? How, why are you voting for him? Well, the connotation of other than he's black implies that implicitly that on some kind of level it's because he's black. So for right. me, I take it as that. Okay. But I'm going to tell you, black people in this country have never relied on their primitive mind. That's white folks. Okay. Everything you did do is a primitive mind. You've been voting for white folks with your primitive mind. But black people could not rely on the primitive mind. We had higher chakra elevation. All right. And that's what got us through slavery. That's why John McCain is a hero for five years of captivity. Then we are eight time, 800 times the hero John McCain could ever be because we was in captivity 310 years. So if he is a hero, okay, because we you are were in captivity, times the be hero, because you were in captivity, we, therefore we it's no big deal that. Times the hero no, because you, I'm going to turn you down. Uh, just, well, I don't want to turn her off, okay? But just because you were in captivity doesn't mean, ma'am, that that doesn't have anything to do with John McCain being in captivity, okay? She's uneducated with her fake journalism degree. Yeah. She ain't going to do nothing but give Alaska away she, to the real folks who's going to take over and move her puppet ass out the way. Oh, I see. All right, well, tell us what Democrat change means, ma'am. Oh. Well, you know, I can't, I, I can't help it out if they won't stay on the program. Well, she know? made a couple of inaccurate. I, we sh we should have just let it, let her roll because then people would have seen the ignorance and the stupidity that she brought to the table when you when you potted her down. We should have just probably let it let that roll so people could hear all what she was saying. But I think she, I think she's, you know, she gave people a pretty good understanding of what kind of person she was. She's a flat racist. And that's all there was to it. Well, so. she forgot to mention that. And she called Palin, what, some of a puppet ass? Yeah. You know, whatever. Well, she also forgot about the 300,000 people that died during the Civil War right. to bring about that change right. that she's talking about. Yeah, there was so. white, a lot of white folks died fighting that. And also, she said she voted for uh, Clinton. Well, everybody said that Clinton was the first black president, so technically... Well, well not she voted for Clinton because she was a Democrat and because she believes in socialist Marxist type things. So, who who sold the the slave masters the slaves? Do you know who sold the slaves to the slave masters? Why don't you tell us? The African tribes did. Well, the Hutus own... and the Tutsis still enslave each other right, today. Right. So, I mean, one yeah. tribe they they beat the crap out of each other right. continuously. Well, but one tribe uh, right. attacks another tribe. Right. They take uh, uh, prisoners and then they sell them as slaves. Right. Right. So the original... America. The point I want to make is America did not create slavery. No, we didn't. Exactly. It wasn't a bunch of white folks that was in a bar smoking cigars with gray hair that said, "Hey, you know, let's go get us some black people over there in Africa and we'll make them plow our crops for us." You know, that's not the way it went down. Yeah. So, all right, that doesn't make it right, and that doesn't justify it. I appreciate that, Pastor. Anything else? Nope, that's it. All right, thank you. In this context, there's no disrespect, so when I bust my rhyme, you break it back. Let's get it started. Ha! Let's get it started in here. Let's You're listening to The Eddie Burke Show. Call 274-KBYR or toll free at 1-800-866-610-KBYR or log on to www.kbyr.com for the blog and more from Smart Radio AM 700. KBYR. A body and soul. Don't move too fast. People just take it slow. Don't get ahead. Just you know what aggravates me the most is do-gooders. That's what aggravates me the most. They want to they want to buy the Ramada Inn. These people do, and over there on Maldon Road, and turn it into a homeless shelter because we're going to feel sorry for the homeless. And that's an arg that's an argument that it may be true. But listen, what about the, the the families who buy homes over there? You know, and they buy their little condo, they buy their their house, and yeah, it's not on the most you know eloquent side of town. What about them people? And it runs down the values of the pro Well, you know, I'd like to buy your house, but, you know, those 300 people that live in that homeless shelter it used to be a hotel, they don't really excite me. And I don't really want to raise my children around them. And my business is right across the street. 
Hey, Eddie. I like coming down to your office because, you know, right before I go inside the door there, I, uh, I get meet and greeted by the homeless. Can I get a dollar? See, nobody cares about, well, I shouldn't say nobody. The emphasis is not placed on whether it's good for maybe those families, those individuals that are out there working, trying to make ends meet, keep the bill collector off their neck, the tow truck out from in front of their house, keep the house payments up to date. See, nobody gives a lot of respect to those folks. You know, got to wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning to get to work by 8, you know, and put up with a boss they don't really care for. You know, work every day, go home, deal with the kids and all that, and trying to put a little money aside. Hopefully, the ho the house is the most is the largest single investment that an average person makes in a lifetime. No, they want to build a shelter around them. Well, we have to care about those people too. Well, that's true, but it shouldn't come at the loss of property value for those who are contributing mostly to society. How am I going to have my little girl walk to school? You know? What am I going to do now? I live right down there. I mean, that place... You bought a condo right. up a couple well, blocks up the street yeah. from, from the Ramada. Right on the highway there, you know, and, and I hear gunfire every night. And to put at homeless you know, people, I'm sorry. If you'd had more money, you'd have bought it someplace else. I'm sure I would have. Right. <laughs> but does that mean, okay, well, well you know... We don't really care about yes. Z-Man and his wife and his little girl. Uh, we'll just, you know, throw up a homeless shelter here because, hey, not it's just good a, for us. Not just any homeless shelter, a hundred rooms. I mean, I mean, honestly, that's a lot of homeless people run, wanting, oh, man, this is going to be horrible. You know, this and, and let's, horrible. let's all admit it, you know, look it. Uh. <laughs> I used to live in Maldon. Maldon has its problems, okay? They already have its, their problems. You know, why you got to throw fuel on it? Why you got to compound the issue like right. a thousand times? But we have, because, oh, you know, man. now you know darn well you ain't going to put it over there near a South Anchorage home. Why like, don't they put like, it downtown? <laughs> they like the homeless people downtown. Hey, you know where you put it? Right there where Oscar's wagon is, the, 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 uh, the taco. Now that doesn't. I don't want Oscar move because I love Oscar, man. He, man, that's some good food down there. <laughs> Oscar, I'm telling you what, that's some. That's you. If you have never been to Oscars, you you got to go down. <laughs> Look, there's only one place to. Put but but there's a big vacant lot down there, right next to the current homeless shelter. Where? Right there, put it down there. It's already, it's a commercial area. It's already established as a homeless area. The people down there have already, you know, been dealing with it. And just, you know, might as well give them a little more. All I know is if a church can't expand, remember the expanding church? Yeah. Because of water problems? Yeah. We should be able to stop, me and you, we should be able to stop this. <laughs> I can't believe be it. We're obstructionists. We're going to be We'll obstruct be obstructionists. <laughs> we're going to have on some, uh, no, we're not going to have any obstructionists on today, but we're going to have, well, anyway, so let me, let me get the call here from Lynn first. Let's go to line one. Lynn. Eddie, Lynn, let, let's, my call. Let's, bend, uh, let's build this homeless shelter. Let's move it over there no, next no, to your Eddie, house. Eddie, let me just. Uh, and wear it. <laughs> where it's going to be placed is a difficult issue because here's here's Tim responding to Z-Man. It says, does this, does this mean Z-Man is a NIMBY? <laughs> Z-Man's a NIMBY. I, I, you know, it is. Not in my backyard. And, I, you know, I guess it's it's tough not to be a NIMBY sometimes when they're going to put it in your backyard because who, you, who else is going to complain? except for the people that affects them the most. I mean, my house is over in South Anchorage, around Abbott and Lake Otis. You know, I mean, it's just, I'm, I don't care, right? But my business is located over there. And, you know, and just because, and I've been involved in this issue, I just see, you know, uh, Muldoon has a very, some very real problems as it is. You know, 
What were we saying off the air, Z Man? Let's see, we're getting a Walmart, a Target. I was happy. And a homeless shelter. <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, they're going to put a Target in next door. I was like, man, things are getting better. My property value is going to go up. <laughs> and then, bam, i just been stabbed in the heart, man. And think about this. On on the, my way from the highway to my house, we live in the third story of a, an apartment complex that we own. It's a condo thing. Like condo thing. Right. Well, on the way there, there's like all these uh, apartments, you know? And they already look homeless, those people who live there. And then you're just going to throw in, oh, man, it's going to be horrible, man. <sighs> His mouth is big, but we don't hold that against him. I'm going to have to go ahead and sort of disagree with you there. This is the Eddie Burke Show on Smart Radio, AM 700 KBYR. Alaskan owned and operated. You know, you're a big celebrity now. People know you. Do you know that? I get people all the time, they stop me and say, Hey, what's Z-Man doing? I'm doing what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I said, I'm ignoring the news is what I'm doing. I'm <laughs> watching Star Trek. I'm watching Deep Space Nine. I'm you watching watch Star Trek? Oh, yeah, I love all that. I'm, I'm watching uh, Stargate SG-1. Do what do they call you guys? Trekkies? Yeah, well... well, well I was like a half nerd, half jock in high school. You know, I'll go, you know, I like to play video games, but I also like to play little b ball. So, you know, b ball. You never played it on a team, though. Oh yeah, yeah. I was actually an all star one year. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's hard to believe. <laughs> what year was that? <laughs> I don't know. It was like a '97, I think. Well, I mean, what grade do you think? I was like a junior, senior. Really? Yeah. Well, what position did you play? Uh, I played down low most of the time. You know, down posting low. up. Yeah, I, I I got fouled out almost every game though. Yeah. I was constantly hacking people, jumping on them. They hated me. You know, you just need someone, and they don't. Well, that's why they you don't get, come up against you no more. I mean, they don't give you five fouls for nothing. Oh no, I was. Or out. is it four in high school? Well, it's five, and then you get kicked out of the game. I got fouled out almost every single game, because they'd run up on me and be like, "No, heck no, boom, on the ground." So I get fouled. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad, man. Hey, every game. I heard some basketball players say. He's a he's a center post up. No, he says, well, that's why they give us five fouls. <laughs> I mean, you're not. It's they expect you to, to do this. right, right, right. You so know? you get four, four chance of four times. Yeah, and then, and then the fifth one you're done. Yeah, don't run at me if you don't want to get on the ground. Yeah, that's that's the, that's the lesson. But yeah. all right, we gotta go. We will not That's the end of the show. Us. I'm sorry, Lisa, but you're out of here. Marxism. There's just some people that you can't change their mind. They will love it forever until it has taken over and failed. They'll just keep on being patriotic. That's Pay it. Pay that taxes. Hey, hug your children. Tell them you're proud of them. Warn them about Marxism. Don't tase them. Don't let them vote for a felon. And most importantly, believe in yourself. And we'll see you Monday. We're out of here. Have a good weekend.